Welcome back to another episode of the Digital Health and Wearables series. Today I have another magnificent guest for you, but let me remind you before I go ahead to subscribe to the channel and share all this magnificent content with your communities in healthcare. And let me go straight to the introduction. Today we have Dr. David Rabin, is the co-founder and chief innovation officer at Apollo Neuroscience. He's also an executive director at the Board of Medicine. David, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Uh, good to see you. I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, all those things with you. Good. You know, busy, working a lot, trying to get as much sleep as possible, which is what this little guy is helpful for. But other than that, you know, it's just hard at work in the startup world. Fantastic. So today we are here to discuss the topic wearable technology and mental health. And the first question that I have for you, Dr. Dave, is what is the real potential, potential of wearable technology in helping with mental health issues? Uh, that's a good question. I think that there's a huge potential. I think we've, we've just barely begun to understand what that potential really could be. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm a board-certified psychiatrist and neuroscientist. And I specialize in what we call treatment-resistant mental illness. So this is things like depression, anxiety, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and addiction disorders that don't respond to the norm well to the normal treatments that we typically use in the clinic. Um, so the, there are an enormous amount of those disorders that are very challenging to treat with the tools we have available right now. Wearable technologies are really exciting because they allow us an opportunity to understand those populations better, right? They give us a better understanding on one hand of ways we can track outcomes and track behavior and track things that happen in the body when people are sick and when people are well and start to predict which people are going to get sick and maybe which people are going to be well and which people are going to recover um, and which ones are going to have more trouble. So that's one side of the wearables community, which is the majority of wearables, which are trackers. And then we also have digital therapeutics, which are wearables that actually do something to change the body. So there's a few of those devices out there. Apollo that we developed is one of them that you can see on my chest. And that technology has the potential to actually change the body so that people who are experiencing symptoms or people who are experiencing just not feeling particularly great uh, or waking up with not enough energy and, and falling asleep too amped and with not ready to fall asleep and don't have their circadian rhythms, technologies like this, um, there are many, including, uh, you know, uh, anything from uh, the neural stimulators, the wearable stimulators, there are electrical ones, there's a couple of vibration ones, they all do different things, but they all help to change the body from the body first. And so those are the two opportunities that we have to understand what's going on in the body, understand the signatures, and then also understand how to change it, that wearables offer us. Brilliant. Yeah, as, as you know, I'm a, a, a very big advocate and fan of wearables. My vision is that wearables can change the world, certainly the health world around the human being. And, and certain things that you mentioned are, are really new, but also um, things are evolving very fast with a lot of technology being developed. And also now, uh, I'm sure you agree with me, we're seeing a spur in adoption because people are actually concerned about their own health. Do, do, do you see that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, a lot of people are taking health into their own hands, which is good. That's the way health should be, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody should be taking care of their own health more. Um, it's good that that's something that is, that is becoming more important now, I think, in our society. I, I don't know about in South America, but I know in the U.S., we have tended to deprioritize our own healthcare and, and our own well-being and try to focus on other people more and focus on our pets more and not focus on ourselves. But um, we can't be our best selves unless we're healthy. So it's very important to focus on. Right. Fantastic. Moving on. Do you have any concrete studies or examples to share with us? Uh, sure. Yeah, there's tons of studies out there. I mean, I think the studies that are particularly interesting you know some of the recent ones came out of mount sinai um 
And uh, out of a lar large populations of healthcare providers and then real world people, this was over the last two years or so that showed that um, if you track HRV, heart rate variability, with an Apple Watch uh, or an Aura Ring, that you can use that data, changes in heart rate variability, which is the rate of change of our heartbeat over time and one of the most accurate measures of recovery. And when we are not recovered or when we're underslept or when our bodies aren't functioning well, HRV drops very, very quickly. And when we're in our best high performance states, HRV goes up. And if your HRV is trending upward and you, know, you generally want to be heading in the direction of over 40, if you start to be trending downward below 40, then you probably want to think about making some life changes. Um, and there's everything impacts HRV. So there's not just one thing that's going to do it for you. But the point is that wearable technology has gotten so advanced over the last 10 years that now this metric called heart rate variability, HRV, that used to only be able to act, be accurately tracked in the lab can now be tracked in the real world over weeks to months. The daytime tracking is still so-so, but weeks to months you can track it. And what they showed was that when you track heart rate variability in people who are about to get COVID, like in that first infection phase around the first like one to two days maybe of getting infected with COVID, their HRV drops dramatically. So what that means is that, and they were able to use that data from HRV dropping. I think this particular study I'm talking about is from the Apple Watch, it came out of uh, Mount Sinai a Medical Center looking at healthcare staff in 2021. And they showed that you could actually, just by looking at HRV dropping in that time frame, detect whether somebody was going to get COVID as accurately as a nasal swab test detects COVID, wow. right? And you don't need a nasal swab and you can just have an Apple watch on somebody that's looking for this all the time. And again, there's other things that can cause HRV drops, but this is really, really interesting data because it starts to help us understand. It's not saying this is the answer, but it starts to help us understand better ways of doing things, right? Yeah, sure. The patterns, and I, I noticed that the aura, aura ring also had that correlation. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. And the third question that I have for you is, do you feel that wearables are used today full potential or are we missing something? I think we're missing a lot. I mean, we're not, we're just scratching the surface, right? So if you really want to think about getting into, you know, and this goes to where some of the future studies have just, that have just come out are very exciting, right? So let's think about wearables from the standpoint of what generation we're in right now and where we've come from. So generation one wearables are like the, the pedometers, the step trackers, the basic Fitbits, the bio, the, um, the devices that just track stuff, but don't really tell you anything about what they're supposed to do or what you're supposed to do. And that's gen one. Those devices are basically not used anymore. Then there's gen two devices, wearables, which are like the fancy Apple watch, the aura ring, the new Fitbits and the new devices that are like really, really fancy. They, collect tons of data and you could also call these some in some ways like tracker trainers they're collecting a ton of data about you and then they're giving you feedback right so they're saying i noticed that you slept poorly last night so try to go to sleep at this time tonight and do xyz differently today and get some meditation time and take some naps and then you'll have a better night's rest tonight and then hopefully for next week but it still requires us to do everything right it's, so it's taking information it's doing the second step of analyzing and, and interpreting the data. And then it's saying, now do this to, to get your, to change your data, make this behavior change. But the onus of doing the behavior change to feel better still is, is on us. We have to make the time and figure out how we're going to make this change. That's gen two wearables. These are the most popular wearables that there are in the market right now. This is the generation that will quickly be expiring. Because the new generation that's that's already coming, that of which Apollo is a member, is wearables that that actually change the body for you. Mm -hmm. So, tracker trainers they track your, our body's rhythms, they track our sleep and wake cycles, and they show us, hey, your rhythm is off, your rhythm is not what it should be. Do something about it. Apollo sends a signal to your body and as sound waves to your skin that your skin interprets first, and then goes to your brain that says you can feel sleepy right now, or you can feel awake right now, or you can feel focused right now by showing you what that feeling feels like to be in that state. And it doesn't require you to interpret any data, to look at any data at all, or to look at any screen for that matter at all. There's no screens involved. 
So it's literally something that can work autonomously in the background with your body that requires no additional engagement. No time is taken out of my day to implement what Apollo is trying to do for me. I want to sleep, so I schedule my Apollo to put me to bed at a certain time. I want to focus in the morning, like when we're doing this call, right? So I set my Apollo to turn on at a certain time to get me in the mode to be able to give you a talk and be my best self. And so that is a different kind of technology. This is the Gen 3 of wearables mm. that a bunch more wearables are starting very slowly to come out in this domain. There are a couple that are now out of business. Cove is one of them. Um, Ember, Ember Wave is another one that's really interesting that delivers heat to the body, right? So this, this is used for, for menopause. Um, for anybody who's struggling with menopause and hot flashes, highly recommend the Ember Wave. Check out. Um, it's a very interesting technology. Um, and these, these are tools like Apollo that deliver a signal to the body that then the body is able to do something with without having to use our brains or take time away from our day to do it. And then they can train the body to enter those states more effectively. Um, so Apollo is really of that third generation training product that acts on the body first and then the brain. And it's tracking is secondary to what these Gen 3 technologies are doing for us. Brilliant. Well, Dr. Dyke, thank you so much. I mean, brilliant. The wearables are changing actually the physiological aspect of the function in some capacities. So that's brilliant. Uh, we come to the end of the interview. I finish my thank you so much for your time, your expertise, and this magnificent insight into the wearables world. Um, I'm not sure if you watch any previous interviews, but I finish with, it's not a question as such, it's called one minute of fame. You can mention Apollo, you can mention personal achievements, uh, personal life, family life, any hobbies, anything, a shout out to any team member, anything whatsoever to round up the interview. One minute of fame, over to you. <laughs> um, so I think, uh, but I think the, I always think that adaptability, and I thought that adaptability is our best skill. So adaptability means being able to take on what's coming at us and then respond quickly and effectively, and ideally come out on top afterwards. So yeah, we're, we're challenged with things every day. Our bodies are constantly under threat. Even for a lot of us, waking up in the morning and falling asleep at night can seem like a challenge. So there is an opportunity to change the way we think about challenge and adapting as a strength that we have to grow faster, to become stronger, to get closer to reaching our, our full potential that is very helpful to accelerating that process. Um, and, and making our, by making, just simply thinking about adaptation or overcoming stress and overcoming challenges and strength that we have, it's like a superpower. And we do it even better when we do it with other human beings around, when we work together to collaborate and adapt together, we actually do it better. As you can see by this incredible world we live in with computers and internet and cities and all these things that required thousands upon thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to build over the years, right? We wouldn't have any of this without this collaborative adaptation. And there's an entire strip of our brains called the insulate cortex which is, has one part of it in particular that's focused on empathy and collaborative adaptation. Most of us, unfortunately, underutilize that part of our brains. And what I would tell you is that as a secret that neuroscience is sharing with the community now, which shouldn't be a secret, it should be something that we all know and, and use regularly, but to some it may seem like a secret because you've never heard it before, which is that adaptation is our single best skill as human beings. Our attention, what we pay attention to around us is our single most valuable commodity as human beings. So we want to spend time learning how to control our attention and what comes in and what we focus on and spend time training our ability to adapt as best we can to stress, which includes doing things that boost our HRV because HRV, HRV is a measurement of adaptability, using technologies that improve our ability to adapt and boost our HRV. Apollo is the first that actually has been shown in trial, scientific trial to actually boost HRV and doing techniques like breathing, soothing touch, soothing music, movement, using good nourishment for ourselves. All of these things help to support resilience and therefore adaptability in our bodies and our minds. 
I personally love ping pong because it's super fast based. And as a sport for me, ping pong and beach volleyball, those are my two favorite activities that I do physically for, uh, for learning, teaching my body how to adapt to fast moving things really, really quick, where it's almost like, I don't even know if I have time to think about it. I'm already have to be in position. Mm. So that's one of the things that I find really helpful, but you can do lots of things. But if you do this, you will activate your superpowers. Wearables can be really helpful. Use your wearables to do things that allow your HRV to trend upward, your resting heart rate to trend downward, and your total sleep quality, amount of time you spend in deep sleep and high quality sleep to go up. This is all stuff that makes us healthier and improves our access to our full potential and ultimately makes us more uh, less likely to be sick and more likely to be healthy. Oh, brilliant. Well, that's fascinating. Uh, Dr. Dyke, thank you so much for that. We could do a, a session in his own right just around that piece. That's, uh, that's, really, that's really nice. I'm also a fan of sport. I played table tennis and ping pong when I was a kid, so I have very good memories. When you mentioned that, I remember I used to do like tournaments in back in Portugal and anyway, in my uh, teenage years. Again, thank you so much for uh, being in here and share these magnificent insights with, uh, with us and the community and the audience. And I'm going to round up now. Thank you. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. And to all our viewers and listeners, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, I'm going to post Dr. Dive uh, LinkedIn and socials and Twitter in here. Engage with him. Ask him questions about this magnificent uh, technology, the Apollo neuroscience, and engage with him to learn more. And I'll see you all next week.